Alright, shalom y'all. Your brother Apollos to my left. Shalom, Ari Jew. Shalom, brother. I'm in St. Israel. Come, come. We're here to give you some reactions on the madness that's going on with our people and hopefully give a righteous reaction where y'all can get some understanding out of it. And uh, you know, fix your households, because most of this gonna be on families. Some of it might be on uh, dealing with our nation, but mostly we're trying to fix the issues that we have with uh, the relationships, which is marriage, really, and let people know their true order and true roles and spread a little light on this whole red pill community thing that's going around, which uh, don't seem to have the answers for the problem that they see. They do see the problem. That's a great thing. Mm -hmm. They just don't have the answers, and the answers is in the Bible. And that's the reason why everybody's trying to be politically correct and not go to the Bible for the answers. But, you know, it's crazy that a country that we so called being politically correct in is the country that say they love God the most, that say they love God. Trust. Exactly. Like, this is madness. But we know who we at. We in Babylon the Great, Satan's seat. So. It's going to be confusion and lies. So let's get into the first one. Oh, that's not what I want. Let's get into it. says Sony Digital reacts to Sweetie only selling two thousand copies first week. I think it's salty. Salty. I don't know. I'm just uh, like, oh, you know what? I never heard. Of I it. never heard of it. But I think it's salt, salt, salty. Salty. I guess. Well, Sony. Uh, Sony tweeted thirteen million followers, hundreds of thousands. Likes on all pictures, mm -hmm. but album sold less than two thousand copies. So it said they had thirteen million followers, God. <laughs> hundreds of thousands of likes on all pictures, but what? But less. The album sold less than two thousand copies. Yep. That's crazy. Uh huh. The math ain't adding up. Y'all want to go first on that? Yeah. <laughs> Give y'all opinion on why the math not adding up. Seems like to me he's more of a, a physical look for people mm -hmm. to hear her, you know what I'm saying, hear her songs. Come on. You look good, but your ass cannot sing. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, that's, that's what it is most times, man. Most times when we're dealing with our sisters and the, these uh, rappers and singers, they just try to look at you, man. And that's the reason why you only sold 2,000 copies. You got hundreds of likes and all that. People love to look at you. Mm -hmm. Looking at you all day, he likes on every picture. They ain't buying that album. <laughs> Why? Because they, like we said in the other video, they selling the act. The act that they putting on got to be nice to your eyes, got to mm -hmm. feel good, everything. But it's just not good music because you're forcing a feminine to be masculine. And you're forcing a feminine to create masculine music and it's what you're gonna get out of it. So that's that's why I think it's like that. It's all the way, mm -hmm. all the way about the looks. And then you look at her, she draped in gold and all that. Yeah, that's all it's about. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Got a breast out. Yeah, I mean, I agree 100% as well. You know what I'm saying? Clearly, the woman's beauty is the reason why she got 13 million followers. You know what I'm saying? Clearly, you know, all the likes on the pictures, like the brothers were saying, is based on her appearance. Without that, Nobody really care, and we know that this is true, especially for men, because the Bible tells us that men don't love nothing more than the beauty of a woman. You God. know what I'm saying? So you can look good, but if the skills ain't there, don't ain't nobody put the bottom music. They just want to look at you. Oh. You are a possession to a man, and America sold our women lies, making them think they can be more than what they are. And the truth of the matter is, even her, she belonged to a man. Her beauty was made to please one man. Not the world. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. 
Come on, come on. I wanted to bring out a scripture about, about this topic. You want me to read it? Yes. I'll put it up on the screen. Come on. Uh, you can go to Proverbs 6, 25. This is now that this is what it's about. Mm -hmm. This is what brothers be looking at in the industry. Even even women, it's really hard on the women because they they follow them. God. These are their idols. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, uh, Proverbs six twenty five. Come Proverbs chapter six verse twenty five. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart. Right. So you looking at this woman because she's beautiful. But deep down inside, she can't sing. Her spirit ain't right. She's a witch. Hmm. She don't know nothing. She's a Proverbs 9.13 woman. God. She don't know nothing. A damn thing about what she's doing. Or what she's looking like. Or who she's uh, who she's mentally breaking down. Mm -hmm. You got kids looking at you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But they're not thinking about that. Not at all. Yeah. It's like, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Right, because uh, they always, you look at them cum brothers that they got. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to put mascara all around their face mm -hmm. or whatever. Look at that crap, man. Uh, look at that. Zoom in. Zoom in. Quick. Zoom out like a hoop Look at them eyelids, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> look at that crap, bro. Then, then you got blonde hair in your head. Mm -hmm. That ain't yours. That ain't yours. <laughs> You got several necklaces around your neck like you're a man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? These are things that our women be looking at, man. This is what they lust after. Yeah, she definitely got them cumbrellas on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is, sisters. I know y'all don't want to hear it, but that's the origin of your big ass eyelashes. They are they were created to keep cum out of women's eyes that was whores. Mm -hmm. Alright? I know that hurt to hear it, but it wasn't just for you to look good. Yeah. And we don't think it look good. We and told y'all many times <laughs> that it don't look good. Yeah, but the Lord said, do not lust after her. Do not lust after her. Don't be taken by her eyelids. Mm -hmm. Come, come, good precept. All right, let's get the next one. Check that out. It says, I told my husband I wanted a picture alone with Jason... Momoa, mm -hmm. but he wasn't comfortable with that. Come on. What? The <laughs> madness. Come the total on. disrespect. Like, <laughs> okay, so much wrong with this. Go ahead. First of all, <laughs> how dare you put another man in a position that your husband's supposed to be in? A woman's supposed to see her man as the greatest thing on the planet. You know what I'm saying? The only thing she should see greater than her husband is Christ himself. Come on. So the fact that she got this man's, another man who's not her husband, arm wrapped around, he looked pretty close to her. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? She's she smiling like big. a bug. Look big at that smile. smile. Like that's how she should feel when her husband is around. Come. Not another man. So you know, Not when her husband getting stiff on. Right. By the man. <laughs> like it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's just utter disrespect. And the man is just weak as hell for even allowing it to happen. You know what I'm saying? And, we talk about this a lot. This is just how they programming men to be. To be mm -hmm. soft, to allow women to run all over them. You know what I'm saying? We brought up as men to, you know, cater to the woman, lay out the red carpet for her, but nobody ever tells the woman what the man, I mean, what the woman's supposed to do to treat, you know, how to treat a man, basically. So it's sad to even see that, but mm -hmm. weak men allow that to happen. So, I mean, you get what you deserve. Yeah, yeah. that's sad. <laughs> It's absolutely sad. It is sad. Go ahead, I. I want to bring out Proverbs 14 and 1. I got yeah. you. Right, because this is something, to be honest, man, I wouldn't. I couldn't be that guy. <laughs> it, it, it's going to be a whole fiasco with me. Hey, for real, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, Proverbs 14 and 1. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 1. Every wise woman buildeth her house. Right, so every wise woman is going to build her house, keep her house, make sure everything is straight. Come on. Right, read on. But the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. Right, see what she just did right there? Yeah, you, you out the window with me. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? If you're doing that, I wonder what you're doing behind my back and everything else. Mm -hmm. Right, you, you, 
you're, you thought about this. You mapped everything out. Yeah. Because you were so comfortable with it. <laughs> so that means you're comfortable with being around another man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that man don't give a damn. He don't care. He disrespectful as well. He already know it. So of course it, it, it's gonna feel right to her because that man not saying nothing. Mm-hmm. Say it. Um, we gonna get get this one as well. It's yeah. like twenty six. Two and six and what? Uh, we can start at seven. You got it out? Yep. Pop, uh, the book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse seven. Just to show people that, again, like we're saying, this is not biblical. This is not how God, or God ordained things. This is whoredom before our eyes, and this is evil. But because we live in America, like they say in God we trust, but everything God established and God said is right, they teach and do the opposite, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. With their mouth, without with their mouth, they honor God, but their works, they deny him. So, you know, we just don't pull out the you know the scriptures and just show you that this is horror, this is evil, and this is not okay. Go ahead and get that out. Verse 7. An evil wife is a yoke shaken to and fro. He that had hold of her is as though he held a scorpion. Right, so the Bible is comparing an evil wife to a scorpion. Scorpion sting you, you will die. Mm. Keep going. A drunken woman and a gather abroad causes great anger, and she would not cover her own shame. Right, a drunken woman and a woman that's always outside the house. In the streets. In the, for the streets, mm. for the clubs, since y'all don't like the streets. We for the club. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she, won't, she won't cover it. They won't cover their own shame. It don't matter how shameless she look. It don't matter because she's going to find a reason in her mind to justify her actions. You know what I'm saying? And the whole world going to justify and back her no matter how wrong it is. No matter how she dogging her man. Man can do everything right. But because he make her feel some type of way, this is what she's going to do to justify being a hoe. And it's not cool. Just keep going up. Verse 9. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyes. Let me get that picture real quick out. The it's, same, the one from last time. Kind of, it said the whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. There she go. You know what I'm saying? Is that the one? Oh, you kind of. Now, nah, let's go to the other one. That's the one? The oh, last one. Kind of. She ain't got them on the I know, I'm just saying, zoom in on it though. Oh, this one? Nah, the other one. Oh, the other one. Yeah, yeah. the white girl. I'm in the. Yeah, man, look at her, look at her eyes, you know what I'm saying? She's extremely happy to be hugged up with another man, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You can tell that she's a hoe. Look at how she's looking with another man stiff arming her husband, the man that's supposed to protect her with, her, with, her, with, her, with, her, with his life, you know what I'm saying? This is sadness. Keep going up. Verse 10, if thy daughter be shameless, keep her and keep her in straightly. Lest she abuse, abuse herself through over much liberty. And this husband's giving his wife too much liberty. And she's abusing herself with the liberty that, sh that she has. Because uh. she don't understand she's in sin. She don't understand, she don't understand that her disrespect to her husband is disrespect to the Lord himself. You know what I'm saying? And if she don't repent, it's not going to end well for her. Mm -hmm. uh, get down to 12 real quick. That is really what I... Verse 12. She will open her mouth. As a thirsty traveler, when he hath found a fountain, and drink of every water near her. And this is what's going on with the women today. They opening their mouth <laughs> as, as like a thirsty traveler and had water in days. And the first time they see water, they're drinking from every head, from every fountain, from every man. Mm. Go ahead and finish that. By every head will she sit down. And open quiver and open her quiver against every arrow. Right, and if you don't know much about bow and arrow, the quiver is what the arrow goes in. It's like the pouch that sticks in the pouch that holds uh. the pouches. You know what I'm saying? And a horse woman, she gonna be available 
to every man that's near her. Mm-hmm. You got to watch out for these signs. You got to look to see these type of things in women because if they show you these red flags, you got to understand, brother, that's not the woman that you want. You want to get away from a woman like this. Uh, all right, let's get uh, Leviticus 26. Leviticus 26. Verse 1. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 1. It says, You shall make you no idols. You shall what? Make you no idols. The Bible tells you not to make idols. Alright? The issue we have here in this picture, Mm -hmm. go back to it. Mm -hmm. This is what you call an American idol. Uh, this is what they make when they make these movies or when they make these musicians, these actors, actresses, these are their American idols. Hmm. And in this world, this crazy world we live in, an uh, idol can come into your household and tell you where he wants your couch at and you're going to move it because you look up to him so much. Hmm. You're going to feel like, oh, it's LeBron. He knows exactly how the furniture should be arranged. It's because you don't have no sense when it comes to these idols. We're not supposed to have no idols. We're not supposed to be following these people. And none of these people are following God. And they, not, I say nine times out of ten, this white boy that's getting stiff on look up to the other white boy that's stiff on them. Mm-hmm. Nine times out of ten. Because they be saying stuff like, oh, well, it was Justin Bieber. How could I can't really get mad at my wife for you know, she she has a crush on on uh, Brad Pitt. I can't. How can I get mad at her? It's it's Brad Pitt. You know what I mean, that's who it is. Right. That's where that, the idolatry come in at. Because you would never say that or feel that way about an average man, a regular man, hugging on your woman and her putting her behind up against him, like in this picture, mm-hmm. while stiff on the you. This could never happen with a regular man in regular form, in regular sense, in a regular world. This is not normal at all hmm. but because of idolatry this is okay and and this is okay on a lot of people's uh chart on a lot of people's scale because of who this man is had this been any other man it's not okay but because who it is if you replace him with any celebrity hmm. it's all good this picture is okay but you replace him with any regular man then you're gonna see a whole different story going on the jealousy it, of man. completely <laughs> different but Again, uh, the idolatry here is why this is okay. Right. And that's where we at in America. We're in the place of idolatry. And the Lord said, ye shall have no idols. No make you no idols. And we live in a land that makes American idols <laughs> every year. All right? that's, that's the land we live in. So, yeah, that's my take on it. This, yeah. this, this idolatry is something else mm-hmm. to where you allow a man to put his hands on your woman, he like, but it was Spider Man. Well, I mean, what do you want me to do? You know, I can't compete with that. <sighs> Madness, man. You had something up? Come on, come on. I wanted to stay in Rock 26 come. and drop down the verse uh, 25 and 26. So, Rock 26 or Leviticus? So, so Rock. So, like, I did say Leviticus, huh? No, nah, we was in Leviticus. Oh, okay. come on, come on. Rock 26. She, she wrong for this. Absolutely. She wrong for this. And a lot of women will see nothing wrong with this picture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't see them just having fun. This man not having fun that's being, that's being still thrown. Right? Exactly. He is not having fun at all. It's like... <laughs> that this supposed to be his wife. Yeah. You know? It's cool to do that in America, though. It's cool yeah. to, like, embarrass your husband or, like, right. poke fun at him. It's crazy. Yeah. You want it what verse again? Uh, 25? 25, 26. Actually, you can read 24 as well. Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 24. A dishonest woman contempted shame. Man, he looked like he, he's, he, look at his face. Mm-hmm. Look at his face. He looks so embarrassed. Look at that. Look at his face. He's not smiling. He's not, mm-hmm. no, nah, man. In his head, like, uh, his friends gonna see this too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I already been calling him. You know it's on Facebook. Straight up. People at work calling him. Oh man, dude, probably that's the wife, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 go back. 
verse 20, verse 24. Uh, a dishonest woman could tempt its shame, but an honest woman will reverence her husband. An honest woman will not even be in that situation. Come. Because that man's not going to allow her to be in that situation. She probably won't even be there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, read that, read that last verse again, Lord. Uh, verse 24. A dishonest woman can tempt its shame, but an honest woman will reverence her husband. Reverence her husband, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and everything. She, she's not about to do what an old girl did up there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? She's going to reverence her husband. If her husband says, no, you ain't taking no picture with dude, you ain't taking no picture with dude. Yeah, you know yeah, that's that's just what it is. You know what I'm they don't do it. If they ain't doing that, then you can tempt this shame. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Uh, verse 25. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. So she didn't care what she did. She had no shame in her game. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And she shall be counted as a who? As a dog. We know what a dog is. Let's let's get that. <laughs> GNT, the good news. Translation. And if you read the Bible, you would not be offended with sin. Straight up. This is the word of God. Reading Christ's opinion. You can't be offended by that. Mm -hmm. You got it? Hopefully they don't. <laughs> Is there up after this one? Uh -huh. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse 25, in the Good News translation. Good news. It says, a self-willed woman. A self-willed woman who thinks she's an independent woman can do everything by herself. Hmm. Read. A self-willed woman is a bitch. Wait a minute. No, that says a dog up in there. <laughs> no, in the Good News translation, it reads verbatim. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse 25, in the Good News translation. A self-willed woman is a bitch, but a woman with a sense of decency honors the Lord. A wife who honors her husband will seem wise to everyone. But if she dishonors him by her overbearing attitude, everyone will know that she is ungodly. So you can tell by how how big that smile is. Hmm. She argued this man down hmm. to take this picture. Mm -hmm. He wasn't going for it. He was not going for it, but oh dude still going, hey man, let her take the picture. Mm -hmm. Oh thank you, you're my hero. But this man is in shame, he's embarrassed. But you he can tell. Hurt. You can tell too uh, by the shirt. You see, it say Denver Comic Con, <laughs> and then just in the background, Denver Comic Con. He a comic head. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So he probably do kind of look up to dude because he in the whole little DC world or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he got the shirt on. So, reason why I say that because he probably not just there for her. He probably was there. He wanted to be there. Yeah, yeah. On, some, on some fan type shit. Yeah, that's crazy. <clears throat> and got stiff on got with his girl. And, and, and possibly his gal, you know, was with, with that man that night. Very possible she, in their world. In their world, yes. Because that is not. I mean, it's Jason Momoa. It, yeah, straight I up. Mean, that would be an honor, dude. Like, Jason Momoa banged my wife. <laughs> like, come on, bro. It's just sad. That was sarcasm. Yep, send the asteroid. <laughs> <laughs> straight up. That's what we're dealing with today, though. All right, uh, let's get to the next one. All right, this one says, My ex really set the bar high for the next nigga. Hold on. Read that again. My ex really set the bar high for the next nigga. Oh my goodness. Go ahead. He got me flowers every week, took me on lunch dates, outside on a blanket with my favorite wine, Cooked for me all the time. Cooked for me all the time. I'm literally not dealing with less. <sighs> Please read the bottom part out. Comments. 
So why is he an it? <laughs> the common sense question. Sister, why are you not with him if he didn't set the bar? Yeah. Her response, because he wasn't cute. I was I was trying something different. Because he wasn't cute. That's what it said. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah. Scripture said, I'm not going to pull the script right now because I don't know what I'm top, but commend out a man for his beauty. Uh, but our sisters don't hear that at all. It's like, yeah, man, he got to look like That's gold. Cool, he got to actually look like gold and have gold. I'm say my ex set the bar high for the next so nigga. So Raka, go ahead and bring it up. And that's the reason why it's not good for a woman to go from man to man. Because now she's sitting here judging this next man by the old man. Which, let's put it in this, this day and age time, okay? It's not right. It's not cool. But what's really going on is the man is dealing with a woman in this day and age, this time, that would be so-called out of his league. I say so called because no woman is out of any man's league. That's right. We used to purchase y'all, and that's how it's supposed to be in a righteous time. For but, about ten American dollars. Right. I mean, it was just, it wasn't nowhere near as much as you nowhere near as valuable as you think you are. Mm -hmm. But sticking to this time, so saying in this time, this man is paying or spending money on a female that's so called above his means. And that's the reason why she don't want him because she feel like she deserves a more attractive man. Mm. But he didn't put himself in a situation by becoming a trick or becoming a simp just to be around a so-called attractive woman or a more attractive woman mm. than he would normally be around again in this time. Because back then, and no matter what he looked like, he just went and purchased the girl that he want from the family that he wanted. So, oh yeah, such and such got beautiful daughters. Let me go over there, how let them get me another wife. It was that simple. It wasn't, you know, I got to go out there and have the best game and then talk to three dating coaches. Need to make sure I get everything right before I go out. I got to have my clothes right, my car right, car got to be clean. I got to make sure I have everything that a woman could desire so I can get the most beautiful one. That's, that's foolery. That's what we learned here in America in this wicked place to cater to the woman put everything on a platter for her and beg her to be a part of your life get on your knee and beg her yeah the Lord is against that just so y'all know so here if this man is didn't have like for instance if he got the woman from the, her father's house and didn't have no uh, you know her being in the streets or whatever he wouldn't have to now have a bar that's already set it would just be him being himself, her catering to him, being himself, and doing everything she can to serve him and everything like the Bible said. But this is what you get when you let women choose. This man was everything she wanted. Everything. Yet because he wasn't cute enough mm -hmm. for her. You'll cash out your whole family on what you could have had, all that, just over some looks. And why you was with him in the first place? Because you knew he was going to spend on you. Mm -hmm. You knew he was going to do all these things. Took me on lunch dates, outside with a blanket. Stuff that you know men is not going to do. I'm not taking you on no date outside mm -hmm. in a blanket, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. And if we do, guess what? You going to get all that stuff together. I'm just showing up. <laughs> all right? Don't get it twisted. Like, we, we in a time where the men is expected to behave like women. And that's why we... We see stuff like this. He rolled out the whole red carpet mm -hmm. and where it got him. Nowhere. But yeah, that's it for me. I go ahead. Uh, you want me, this uh Soraka Living Come on, verse two. Let me put it up there. Eleven. Yeah, eleven and two. It's the good news translation I'm reading from. Come. On. Oh, okay. I'm going to read right. this one first then. Okay, then the good news. <clears throat> this is Ecclesiastes chapter eleven, verse two. Commend not a man for his beauty, neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. Go ahead. Uh, 
same same chapter and verse, Good News Translation. It says, do not compliment a person on his good looks. On the other hand, do not look down on someone who is unattractive. Mm -hmm. uh, that's exactly what she was doing. Mm -hmm. Looking down on him because she was unattractive. Because he was unattractive to her. But go ahead. Right. I mean, the problem in this world, again, is we got to understand as men that the woman is our servant. She was made to help us and serve us. Uh -huh. So when we going out of our way, if you can give me a Proverbs 31 uh, and a 3. The problem is we've been trained from ground up to give everything that we earn, everything we have to the woman, whether she deserves it or not. And instead of making sure women are wives and can be wives and want to be wives and have a family together, we just doing this to women who just want to be hoes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We tricking our bread to women who don't even deserve this kind of stuff. And then we wonder why we be in these types of situations where, you know, women just get you, then leave you, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's some type of cycle. But again, it's not supposed to be like this. It's because we came so far away from the ways of God and because we don't want to open the Bible and get the solution, we're going to continue to have a problem. You can get that for me, bro? This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 3. Give not thy strength unto women. It says what? Give not thy strength unto women. And when you really look into this verse and looking at these words in the Hebrew, when it says give not your strength, that's going into your funds. It's going into your money. It's going into your energy. It's going into your time. God telling you, give not your strength. Give not your money. Don't. Buy flowers every week. Don't roll out red carpets. Stop That's having right. these. <laughs> Stop uh, buying these uh, picnic dates and all that other stuff for women who don't deserve it, bro. Like, just because she look good, don't mean she good for you. Uh, it's like, beauty is vain. But go ahead and finish that. It says, give not thy strength to women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. And it's destroying us out here. As kings, as men, we getting destroyed by the women who was created to help us. To create it to be our rest, create it to be our peace. But because America has given them this this outlet to now dog they men, not not use men for whatever, you know what I'm saying, not give a damn what we want, what we think, you know what I'm saying, what we're going through, it's destroying us because we love our women. We want families, we want this type of stuff, but it's impossible to have families with women like this. And mm -hmm. the world is full of majority of women like this. You know what I'm saying? So, it's just sad. It's sad. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> Real tough. You mind going back to that, uh... Which one? The, the picture? Yeah, the picture. You want to read it again? Yeah. It says, My ex really set the bar high for the next nigga. He got me flowers every week, took me on lunch dates outside on a blanket with my favorite wine, cooked for me all the time. All the time. I'm literally, I'm literally not dealing with less. So, the reason why she said she put up with you because he wasn't cute. Cap. Yes, Cap. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna read why I'm saying that's Cap. It's because of the fact that you literally set this man down and said, look, I can't do this no more because you're not cute. Then this man said, well, I didn't get all this for you. Mm -hmm. That's Cap. She did not break up with this man because he wasn't. Oh, he's still tricking. He's still he's still on the side tricking. Yeah. You know so it <laughs> it's when you tell a woman when you spoil a woman so many times and you've been giving her so much stuff God. and you finally tell her no, you ain't nothing to her. Mm -hmm. You ain't nothing. That we were just talking about yesterday. Okay? Just talking right. about it. Straight right. Up. As soon as you tell her no. Oh nah, you uh, you ugly, a hey, you know what I'm saying? You everything on the book, right? Uh, Read uh, Sirach 26, it's so like the 25 in the JNT, and verse 17 and 18. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 25. You say verse 17? Yeah. Verse 17. It says, when a wife is in a bad mood, her expression changes until she looks like an angry bear. Her husband has to go and eat with the neighbors where he can't hold back his bitter sighs. So, as soon as 
bitch man tell her no that she can't get a BBL or this and this and this. Mm. She gets so angry. She get mad. She in her feelings now. Mm -hmm. That man don't want to hear that. That man going, that man telling you, man, I done did everything for this for you, and you telling me you want to. <laughs> now he ugly. Now he ugly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, this, these are things that these women really be doing, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can't say no to them. Real Everything got to be yes. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. No. No. Hey, man. Yeah, they need to hear no, man. Mm -hmm. Ain't enough. There's not enough brothers telling them no out here. And then when they hear no, they feel like somebody done them wrong. Mm -hmm. And it's for their best. You had something else? Oh, no, nah, I was just... Uh... That was madness, man. Mm -hmm. Alright, the next one. Yeah, this one's a little crazy. <laughs> Alright. It says, can you zoom in on the picture? I don't know if they can see that picture. Let's see. Let's yeah, see that got, black eye. She got fucked up. Yeah, she got a black eye, y'all. Just I don't so y'all. What she did to get that? Let's see. Let me, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The woman can never be wrong. Yeah, no. I'm saying never. This is America. The woman is perfect. Uh, my girlfriend got raped and beat. I broke up with her. Uh, you just zoom it out a little bit. I can't really see everything. Right there. Yeah. I broke up with her right after she told me. This is what happened. Dating girlfriend for seven months. She wants to go to this sleazy club with her friend. Oh, this sounds like some shit that happened to me already. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening to me, bro. It's wild, right? Yeah, now. no. She wants to go to some sleazy club with her friend. I told her I didn't want her to go. Had an argument about it. She was like, you don't own me, and I can do what I want. There it is. And that bullshit. There it is. You don't own me. Now, remember, we're looking at the picture of her black eye, mm -hmm. all right? Say you don't own. Let's get that real quick. Let's get the so understanding. Like 36. Thirty-six twenty-four. Let's get that. A lot of women might be confused about that. They might think that nobody owns them. Yeah, let me know. Thirty-six twenty-four. This is the book. You got it up. Go ahead. The book of Sirach, chapter thirty-six, verse twenty-four. He that get it the wife. Beginneth a possession, mm -hmm. a help like unto himself. A what? A help like unto himself. Sweetheart, you are the helper. <laughs> you are the assistant. You are the secretary. That's what you are to a man. Go ahead. And a pillar of rest. And a pillar of rest. You see, when he get around you, he supposed to be getting all kind of rest. Because mm -hmm. you're just doing everything for him. He needs you to go get this. You got it quick. Mm -hmm. Pillar of rest. All right, so let's go back to it. Because the woman said, you don't own me. Mm -hmm. And again, she ended up with a black eye. All right. It ain't from him. All let's right. see. Go ahead. It says, I told her if she went, then I'm breaking up with her. Mm -hmm. She said she wouldn't go and, and dropped it. Saturday came. Hadn't heard from her all day. At 4 a.m. on Sunday, she calls me crying. She says she got raped and beat up. She went to the club anyway. Mm. Apparently, she left alone with some guy and his friends to go to a party. No. <clears throat> he already told her she couldn't go. So, in America, it's cool for women to do what the hell they want to do. Mm. But, in reality, this is her Lord telling her she cannot do what the hell she want to do. And she went anyway. That's a sin. Mm -hmm. All right? That's sin, what that's sin, called. Sin. Sinny, sin, sin. And that black eye was payment for the sin from the most high. That's and called so, judgment. Exactly. <laughs> that is called judgment. All you got to do is listen. No black eye. Mm -hmm. She would have been safe and protected. She would have listened to her man. That's your protector. How can he protect you if you don't obey him? Right. You know what I'm saying? It's impossible. <clears throat> he gave you a perimeter to stay inside of, to not reach danger. You went outside the perimeter and got jacked up. And then called him hmm. to come save you. 
Let's see what he say though. But keep going. <laughs> oh man. Had many feelings about this. None of them pleasant. I told her if she went to the club that I'd leave her, and I told her we were over. She started freaking out and saying she needs me right now and that she was sorry. Mm -hmm. Told her to never. Now she need him. Right. Good. Now she need him. <laughs> told her to never call me again. Have been getting uh, rap rap rapid hate from her friends, mm -hmm. and my friends think I was way too cold. Mm -hmm. She broke my trust, went somewhere I said not to, was probably going to end up cheating on me anyway, mm -hmm. and got raped and beaten over it, and I'm supposed to feel sorry for her? I saw her like yesterday, and she was. Pretty beat up. She had bruises and a black eye and stuff. So I do believe she was raped. But this wouldn't have happened if she just listened to me. Hmm. Everybody thinks I'm evil. My ex-girlfriend has been trying to talk to me. But I have no desire to speak to her. You guys think I was too harsh? I just have a hard time feeling bad when I feel so right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, which one of y'all hey. go first? Okay. Hey, brother. You are not... In the wrong, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, just the first two sentences reminded me of a situation very similar, you know what I'm saying? I had this chick, wanted to go to this party, but she was going to be one of the only females. And in my mind, I already know this going, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be drunk, it's going to be some touchy-feely shit. You're going to call me crying, and that's exactly what happened, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, long story short, got into a whole big-ass altercation over a female who didn't listen, you know what I'm saying? And... If y'all would just listen to the man that God put in y'all life, y'all would be protected from a lot of this stuff. But because y'all make these bad decisions, y'all take no accountability. You know what I'm saying? And every time y'all get put in a bad situation, y'all want somebody to build y'all eyes. Uh, I agree 100% with the brother. Like, why mess with a woman who don't do what you need her to do? If you can grab Sirach 25, I think it's 25. Last, nah, uh, give me a uh, verse. So you can get 23. 23. Start 23 and we're going to get uh, me down to like 25. Sirach 20. 26. Come on. Sirach 25, 23. A wicked woman evaded the courage, naked in heavy countenance, and a wounded heart. Right. A wicked woman. Destroys men. A wicked woman, she done broke this man's heart. You know what I'm saying? He was trying to protect her, keep his woman safe. Not only did he got to see she got her ass whooped, but now he got to think about how she got raped and all this other stuff. Like, violated. Violated. All because she ain't listened to him. And, like, again, I understand. It's like, why, why should I feel sorry for her if she would have just listened to me? Apparently, she wanted to go out there and be for the streets. Mm -hmm. And... The streets rewarded her for her bad behavior. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? Keep going up. A woman that would not comfort her husband in distress, making weak hands and feeble knees. Man, the man was probably begging her not to go. She probably got to the point, okay, I ain't gonna go. And then just ghosted the man, just did what she wanted to do. And had knew she had nobody else to call but him at the end of it all. You know what I'm saying? The Lord, what happens in the dark, the Lord will bring it to light. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Probably wasn't going to tell him at all. At all. But she, it got to the point where she can't see me with this black eye. Like, what? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, your ass shouldn't have been there. You should have just listened and stayed your ass at the house. Yep. Keep going, up. Verse 24. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. Say that again. Of the woman came the beginning of sin. Uh -huh. Because of the woman doing shit like this, not listening to that man, this is what brings us to sin. This is why we die. And as men, we got to be able to hold our woman accountable. And if she don't do what we need her to do, do what we ask her to do, cut her ass off, leave her ass for the streets, and find you one that will obey you. Because uh -huh. they out here. But one like that, that's not for you, bro. Keep going. And through her, we all die. Because of the woman not listening to her man and the most high, we die. Keep going. Give her the water. Give the water no passage. Neither a wicked woman liberty to get abroad. Right, and that's what he was trying to do by setting the boundary over her, telling her not to go to the club, not giving her a way to abuse herself. But again, she 
went ahead and did what she wanted to do instead of listening to her Lord. Verse 26. If she go not as thou wouldest have her, cut her off from thy flesh, and give her a bill of divorce, and let her go. Brothers, if you got a woman who's not going the way you want her to go, cut her ass off and divorce her. She's not a good woman. That's not a godly woman. That's not, oh, I found a wife, so I found a good thing from the Lord. No, a wife is going to obey you and treat you like Christ. She's going to listen to you in everything. And if she obeys you, disobeys you on one thing, that's a sin she needs to repent for. And this is what we got to get back to. We wonder why our households and our families are out of order. It's because we're not going by God's way and God's order. That's right. And that's it. Come on, come on. Can we get our first Timothy 2.11? Uh, we can read really down to 12. And that's all I want to do. Ephesians 5.22. Come on. Can't just stop at 22. You got to get at least the 24 out. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> 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 you going to verse 11, right? Yeah, start at verse 11. Yeah. It's the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. So that's the first thing she did not do. God. She was not shut, you know. She was, for one, she was talking, she was probably talking over them. You are, mm -hmm. Most of the time, they talk over them. You know what I'm saying? So it says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. All subjection. In all obedience. That's right. Mm -hmm. In all obedience. Just listen and obey. Right. It's that simple. It's just that simple. Same way the most I told us to keep his commandments and mm -hmm. do Listen and obey. Mm -hmm. All right. Keep reading. Verse 12, but I suffer not a woman to teach, mm -hmm. nor to usurp authority over the man. Wait, read that part again. Nor to usurp authority over the man. Right, go ahead. But to be in silence. But to be in silence. So the woman has no authority, no right, no legal document stating that she has authority over no man, no uh -huh. matter who it is. The Most High says, no woman has authority over a man. I don't uh, care what President Biden is saying. For real. What about I, her master's degree? I don't care about <laughs> all that. She's not my master. The doctor? She ain't, she's a, she's a, she, I'll kiss a doctor. She's degree. supposed to be a pillar of rest. Huh. Mm -hmm. Say less. I uh, thought the American accolades meant someone who came to God. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Hey, man, like the apostle said, man, I'd rather obey God rather than man. God. God. That's right. So the Lord said for the woman to be in subjection in all things. God. Let the woman learn in silence for all subjection. She has no reason to be teaching not that damn word of the Most High. Mm -hmm. She has no authority over the man. And you just need to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Learn something to be quiet. Uh, go to go, go to that Ephesians. Ephesians 5. Verse 22. It says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So mm -hmm. the same way you will submit to the Lord and be in suggestion in all things unto the Lord, the same way you're supposed to be to your own husband. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah for the word of God. <laughs> Come on, all praise. Keep reading. Uh, verse 23 For the husband is the head of the wife The wife, no, the wife is the head of the husband For the husband is the head of the wife Go ahead Even as Christ is the head of the church Go ahead And he is the savior of the body So he <laughs> He is the savior of the body Come. Just like the, the, the head The man is the savior of the wife Come. Come. Right, keep reading Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ. So the subject is in obedience unto Christ. Uh, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. In some things. In everything. In what America say. In everything. everything. The Lord said in everything a woman is supposed to be subject unto their own husbands. Uh, in everything he says. Everything. So when you when a woman breaks the a commandment of the 
of the man like what oh bro did. Uh-huh. See, that's what happens when you go against the Lord. Yep. Right. You get a black eye. Mm-hmm. One way or another. Straight up. Out. Physically or spiritually. <laughs> right. You gonna get a black eye. Uh, and you, every, we all know how many black eyes of Israel got. Uh, we don't need no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, uh keep keep reading on that king. Verse 26, no, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So one thing this, this dude did, man, he told his, he told his wife not to go to one. Uh-huh. So if Christ see us going off or we asking Christ for something that seems to go off to him, he's going to say no. Mm-hmm. We already have the law. He gave us, he gave us the law. So if the law says not to do it, don't do it. Mm-hmm. That's his word. The Lord said that. Uh-huh. Just like him, this man told his wife not to go to that club. Come. She went anyway. You got dealt with. You sinned against your Lord. So now you get dealt with. Right. Yeah. So that's it on that one. So. Alright, come, come. Let me go back to Ecclesiasticus real quick. Chapter 25. Okay, come. Uh. Uh, verse 13. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 13. It says, Give me any plague but the plague of the heart, and any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. Give me any mm. wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. Now, why did I go here? Our women, and of course, all women of the earth now, and uh, the time we in, they feel like they know better than everybody. They think they know everything. You can't tell them nothing. That is the wickedness of a woman. The wickedness of a woman is she feels like she know better than her Lord. The one that's been put in charge of her. She feel like she know better. It's like a child feeling like they know better than the parent. That's the same type of headache you get from dealing with a wife like that. But it tells you, let me go, go to read one more time from the top. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 13. Give me any plague but the plague of the heart, mm-hmm. and any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. Because that stings a man. Mm-hmm. Like I tell you, a man loveth nothing better than the beauty of a woman. So when you bring that to him, something like that, he's trying to protect that one thing that he loves the most, his woman. His possession. He trying to protect it. But you want to go all out of bounds and do the one thing that he told you not to do, which is not be around a bunch of men in a nighttime situation, drunk. Hmm. He telling you this, but you just want to party so bad that you'll throw all of the safety out the window, all of the counsel, all of the command of your man out the window so you can go and have fun. That's why it's giving me any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. This is the same woman that it, she can do all kind of wickedness, go sleep with this man, do whatever. But if she find out you even talking to another woman, she want to start breaking shit. She want to start tearing your cars up. She want to start busting out windows. She want to do all kind of madness, all because she cannot control the situation. Give us any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. It's because they don't have no damn sense. It just is what it is. Mm-hmm. We, we see this every day on all these channels we watch, and we see, well, everybody's trying to correct these women, but all they do is continuously come up with excuses for their wickedness. They will not stop. They continuously come up with excuses. So we got to understand what we're dealing with. If she will not go as you would have her, again, on verse 26, if she will not go as you would have her cut her off from thy flesh. Why? Because she is wicked as hell. That just is what it is. I know we want to believe so much in society today that the woman knows and she can do this and she can come up with her own and this and that. She has to be told what to do. If she's not being told what to do, she is in wickedness because that's what comes 
from a woman. What is that on the other one? Uh, 19. Is it 19? Which one? All oh, wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. From a woman come wickedness. Oh. Uh, that's uh, 24. Grab that real quick. Out. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 24. Mm. It says. Not that one. Oh. From a moth come a, a, a garment. From a garment come a moth. Oh. From women. Wickedness. Come. The Lord real specific. See, what you women don't understand is we're trying to save you from yourself. Your mind wasn't created for you to control your own life. It wasn't created for you to run around doing the things you choose is good and having what you call fun. No, we actually got life to live. We actually got families to raise and you got stuff to do. Not just sit around and look pretty all the time and take a thousand selfies. <clears throat> Sarah 42, 13. Come on, go ahead. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 42, verse, I'm going to go ahead and start at 12 real quick. It says, Behold not everybody's beauty, and sit not in the midst of women. Come. For from garments comes a moth, and from women, wickedness. From women, wickedness. Now, if we understand that the woman's supposed to be controlled by a man, she's supposed to obey him in everything. It shouldn't be nothing outside of everything because everything covers everything. <laughs> what it's telling you is from women come wickedness. If you are not controlling the situation, you have to be in full control of her. And I mean full control, meaning everything that like they have to have that they had a little Instagram and they Facebook and all that. You should be able to get on there no problem and mm -hmm. check it out and see what's going on with your woman. You should be able to get that phone and see what's going on with the woman without no issues. It shouldn't be a fight. You got to chase her down and go lock yourself in the closet. Right. To check. It shouldn't be none of that. It should be, yes, sir, hand it over. That's what it should be. And a good woman that knows she's not doing nothing wrong, it's going to be, yes, sir, hand it over. Mm -hmm. And she's going to go do something else. Because right. she, really, she ain't worried about you finding nothing in that phone. Right. Because she keeping it real and she being in obedience. So we have to understand dealing with these women, they are not righteous unless they have a head that they are listening to. If they just going about their life, doing whatever on their daily, and you best believe they're doing wickedness every day. <laughs> every day. Every day. Which one is that? <laughs> yeah. and we gotta get something way harder for that <laughs> but uh you best believe they're doing wickedness every day because they don't know righteousness mm -hmm. we are the beacon of light to them we are the ones to explain to them what the bible's saying they can't get it without us when they having conversations with their worldly friends everything is wickedness mm -hmm. Whether they talking about what happened on TV, whether they talking about what they ate, whether they talk about how to deal with their children, or these holidays, from women gonna come wickedness if you're not controlling them. Mm -hmm. That's why they want you, I mean, this is an evil society. They don't want you to control. The same ones that told you not to discipline and not to control your women is the same ones tell you not to discipline and control your child. Let them be whoever they want to be. Let them be free. Let them say what they want. Let them act how they want. They feel like they're a giraffe and they're trans giraffe then. Let them be what they want to be. And that, these are the people that we learn in relationships from. We learn in how to carry on marriages from these type of people, man. And that's why it's so upside down. Because we don't understand and will not accept what God's saying right here. Mm -hmm. That wickedness comes from women. And they have to be controlled in everything. If they not controlling everything, he telling you straight up what's going to come from him. Problem is we don't trust the Lord. A lot of people just don't trust the Lord. They say they believe in him. But when we start breaking down the things he say and how people are supposed to be, you see with their actions that they don't trust the Lord. Mm -hmm. You had something else on that for? Uh, I mean, I was just sitting there thinking as, you know, listening to y'all talk. It's like, okay, she, she claimed she got ready. Come. You know what I'm saying? But she told her boyfriend that she was willingly going to this party Come. with another man. Like, after party. You know what I'm saying? It could have been a hotel. It could have been... She just told him it was another party. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like, you got to think about 
the context, the conversations they having in the club to make her even want to leave with another man, knowing she got a man at home who just told her not to go. Good. You know what I'm saying? So in my mind, I'm over here thinking like, nah, she was probably about to give it up. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, something to happen. And he was thinking the same thing when he was like, she was probably going to cheat on me anyway right, anyway. that night. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's just, it's just so much wickedness. So I'm my mind into thinking like, damn, what if, whether she was raped or not, you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. what if she ended up getting pregnant? God. You know what I'm saying? Nah, and he, he did take her back. Now he got her not only, <laughs> I hope he don't take her back, but you know what I'm saying? Just hypothetical. Now you got to look at this child from another man because... Your woman was disobedient when it's going to be a hoe. You know what I'm saying? Once you go let another nigga hit. And then, yeah, I just wanted to get Ciroc 23. Let the comment section tell him he, he needs to just take the child as he is. Right. Yeah, that's a real man <laughs> would do that. It's like, no. You know what could do no wrong. Man. A real woman would listen to it, man. Which one you want? Uh, verse 23. Yeah, we can, uh, yeah, we start at 22. 22? Yeah. Just, and it's just hypothetical again. Got you got it. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 23, verse 22. Thus shall it go also with the wife that leaveth her husband, and bringeth in in, in hair by another. So again, it's just hypothetical, you know what I'm saying? She went to this club, got knocked up by another dude. What if she brought home and let the child by somebody else. What does God say about this? Okay. So, this is what's going to happen to a woman like that. Go ahead and read. Verse 23. For first, she had disobeyed the law of the Most High. Wait, God has a, a law? Mm. Yes, God has a law, which we read earlier, Ephesians 5, 22 through 24, wives are to obey their husbands in everything and treat their husbands like the Lord. Okay. You know, damn well, if the Lord told you not to go to that party, you wouldn't go to the party. Good. You wouldn't argue with the Lord. You wouldn't do none of that. You yes, my Lord, and sit down and find something else to do. Or ask the Lord, well, my Lord, can we go out and, you know what I'm saying? Good. Like, but to go outside of the Lord's commandment and go do your own thing, you ask him for a judgment to hit you. All right. Go ahead. So first thing she did wrong was disobey God himself. And secondly, she had trespassed against her own husband. Wait, the woman can sin against her husband too? She had trespassed against her own husband. So it's not you just sinning against God by not being obedient to your husband. You also disobeying and uh, sinning against your own husband. The one who God put in your life to be your protector. God and Lord. And your Lord. You just committed a sin that you need to ask forgiveness from him and God for. God. And again... That's up to him to forgive you. He don't have to forgive you for that. You did the most treacherous thing. You know what I'm saying? This man trusted you, and you went out and you broke his trust, and now you're begging him to trust you again. It's not that simple. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's not that simple for a man, especially when he really cut for you. Go ahead and read. And thirdly, she had played the whore in adultery. She has did what? She had played the whore in adultery. You played the whore in adultery. You played the whore by allowing another man to hit when you got a man. Come. You playing the whore. You went to the club when your man told you not to. And then not only did you not stop there, you also went further and also leaving the club with another man who wasn't your man. Because he didn't rape her at the club. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's it's sad, man. But this is the world we live in. And you know what I'm saying? Everybody in her comment section, all her friends, like the dude was saying, they justifying all the evil shit that she did, they just want him to look over all that. They looking over all of that mm-hmm. and just want him to just accept it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nah, man, that ain't accept. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, what, what verse is that? Uh, I'm, at, I'm at 23, uh, reading the last uh, verse. Come on, go ahead and finish that up. And brought children by another man. Uh, get that, light, that next verse. Verse 24. She shall be brought out into one con- into the congregation. It's like she shall be brought out into the congregation, and and in position shall be made of her children. Her children shall not take root, and her branches shall bring forth no fruit. 
Right, all because she didn't do it the way God said do it. You know what I'm saying? So it's unfruitful if we just go around the way that God set up. It's better if we just trust God and trust his way. Men, stand up for what's right. You know what I'm saying? Stop allowing these women to disrespect you and go around you. Women definitely got to be more obedient to your husbands and your men that, that's in your life. Listen to them, obey them if you want to be with them. If not, you know what I'm saying? We're not going to keep putting up with this. Uh -huh. Uh, let's get the next one. I think this is the last one. Yeah, it's the last one on this video. So check that out. All right, so we got a brother and a sister. You know what I'm saying? Looks like it's a table in between them. And it looks like they comparing what they bring it to the mm -hmm. table. Uh, let me get that first part real quick. Yeah. It says, uh, yeah, you're beautiful, but we need more than that if this relationship is going to last. So the brother says, that's it? Well, she says she bring in her beauty. I'm beautiful. You know what I'm saying? They compare what they bring to the table. You see she got her beauty. Which a man loves nothing better than a beautiful woman. Yeah. You know, that's a chick. You know, I say, okay, yo, she pretty. She gonna be, I can look at her every day. Something to look at. Yeah. That's it, though? Like, it's just gonna be something for me to look at? This brother at it. You know what I'm saying? That's all you, you bring it? So when your beauty starts to fade in 15 years, then what? Well... We'll still have love, is her response. <laughs> still have still love. Still have love. You know what I'm saying? Even though love for men translates a little different mm -hmm. for love for women. But he was like, nah, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? So she bringing her beauty while he bringing money. Because he going to spend his money on her cars. She going to be driving. House. She going to be, you know, have a, a home to cover her shame. He got a career, so they're going to have some type of stability. And he himself is a personal security guard for every, everywhere she go. Mm -hmm. So he provides security, but all she got to do is look good. Come. No obedience, no respect, you know what I'm saying? None of that, huh? No help towards his goals, his dreams, his aspirations. Just, mm -hmm. just look good. Just beauty. <clears throat> That's it. Yeah, that's crazy. I want to bring God up. Proverbs chapter 7. Let's get it. Verse 5. Right, because a woman can say a lot of things, right? And she don't she don't bring forth what she said. Mm -hmm. Right. And she said she was always on that table with beauty. That's all she had. Let's read Proverbs 7 and 5. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 5. That they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flatters with her words. Mm -hmm. Right, so, uh, read verse 4. Say unto wisdom, you are my sister, and call understanding your kinswoman, uh -huh. that they may keep you from the strange woman, uh -huh. from the stranger which flatters with her words. See, that's what that brother used. He used wisdom. Uh, right. He he seen he seen the BS she was on. Mm -hmm. She cause he she seen what he got. So she thinking, oh he a son. I'm gonna get him cause of my beauty. Mm -hmm. He said, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> nah, I, I know what you about. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can tell about the way you dress and you 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 just want me for what you see what I got. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We gotta watch out for women like that, man, because they, they definitely come. They coming in like that, bro. Absolutely. Keep going, you do it. You know what I mean. All right, but uh, let's go back to the picture. So, brothers, we already know we coming with all of what he putting on the table. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it's another picture. I just want to pull up just a reference, reverence off this one. Just ridiculous. Let's see if I can find it real quick. There it is. All righty. Now, this is pretty much what she is offering. All right? In case y'all don't see it. She has vagina on the table. 
That's what she brings to the table. That's what she's telling That's, her beauty. That's what she means by beauty. You get this. Is this, this is what you get. Is, is it at least untouched? It's not untouched. Yeah. It's very much touched. <laughs> All right? Very much touched. I understand that. Very much tainted. Yes. So I just want to pull that up real quick so we can get a little quick understanding of what she meant by beauty. She meant her vagina. Mm-hmm. All right, she means her body is what she brings to the table. Mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> crazy part is these women, these so called modern women, they love to not bring nothing to the table and love to ask for everything and still say we're equal at the same time. Mm-hmm. So we equal, but I gotta have a stack, of, a whole stack on my side of the table of what I offer, and you don't, you say that you the table or you say that you only offer your body. And if a man have to ask what you offer, then he's this and he's he's weak and he's lame and he's he's broke and all this. Look, the man could be the richest man in the world. He's going to ask you what you offer to the table. What do you bring to the table? Why? Because what women still fail to understand in America is we want mothers. We want wives, man. We want families. We don't want hoes. We don't want Instagram models. We don't want our daughters being taught that. So when you say you bring that to the table, we we expecting you to put sewing on the table. We expecting you to put cooking on the table, mm-hmm. obedience on the table. We expecting you to put good with children on the table. Know how to do things in the house to cause peace. Know how to be a good team player, working with the other wives. This is the type of stuff we want to hear. Not just, oh, well, if you can't see what I want to bring to the table, then you ain't the one for me. Well, you damn sure right about that because if I can't see it, I'm damn sure not the one for you. Because the truth is you're supposed to bring peace to the table. You're supposed to come to the table with nothing but peace and, and humility and obedience. But instead, you think you just come with beauty. It is amazing how men still have to be traditional, but the woman don't have to be obedient. Mm-hmm. That is amazing in itself that, that you can still expect that. But like we always talk about, these women have no idea what men want and do not care at all what men want. Why? Because it's, it's always another simp around the corner mm-hmm. ready to give them what they want. And that's why our brothers got to wake the hell up and stop being that simp around the corner. Stop giving in to these women. Stop giving them a, a chance to sin with you. Remember what you're doing. Understand, the Lord got rules. He got commandments. And we can't break them no matter how fine she is. But, yeah, we bring everything to the table. We got to understand that these women have to bring submission to the table. That's not something that we could just say, okay, well, you don't, you don't have to bring this. Or you, don't have to. you have to bring submission. The man is providing for you, protecting, making sure you have everything you need. You have to bring submission. That is the only way you can be fit for a king. That's right. All right? You have to bring submission to the table. Without submission, there is no deal. The deal is off of the table. All right? You just put beauty on the table, he said, I'm good with that. that I'm straight. The de- it have to have submission stacked on that side. All right, and then once we got that, if that's the only thing on that side, you can't cook, you can't clean, you can't do nothing else, but submission on that side, deal accepted. Mm-hmm. It is accepted. Why? Because we can teach you. Mm-hmm. We can put you on all kind of YouTube cooking <laughs> channels. You're going to be, you're gonna be a, a chef by next year, I'm sweetheart. You. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We can put you on all kind of uh, cleaning channels, right. have you around here with the high spick and span. Right. Just one thing you're willing to learn. Kind of, exactly. <laughs> one thing we can't do is give you that willing heart to learn and listen. We can't we can't give that to you. The most I can give it to you, but we can't give you that that heart and mind to listen. We can read God's word to you, and if you believe it, then the spirit will stick to you, like Ephesians 1 13 say. But if you don't believe it, the spirit is not gonna stay with you. All right, if you believe something the world said. More than what God said, guess who spirit you got in you? The world. Mm-hmm. And the Holy Spirit. Then. 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> then skit died on you. Holy Spirit out of the yeah. why? Because you refuse to listen and believe the words of the Lord. Belief is is key to keeping the spirit. Mm -hmm. If you start believing what the world says is true, you're gonna lose the spirit. I'm talking about instantly. Mm -hmm. You're gonna lose the spirit. All right, so. We have to believe what God said, and that's how we keep our families together. That's how we keep everything running smoothly without belief. Our belief got to be strong. Our faith got to be strong. But, uh, you had something else? Yeah, I just wanted a couple more. Um, go on, go on. But uh, we get Proverbs 18, 22. Uh, but it, like the brother was saying, the, the belief, uh, I forgot what I got in there it said, but he said, HBO, you hear the word of God, you believe the word of God, and you obey the word of God, yeah. and that's what's going to help us keep our families together. That's what's going to help your sisters be fit for a king. Proverbs what? 3? 18, no, 22. Let me get like three precepts real quick. Because yeah. again, just because she got a vagina don't make her a wife. It's other qualities in a woman besides having a vagina that make you a wife. Just having a vagina just means you a female. Yeah. It actually means you a wife. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 22. Whoso findeth the wife, findeth the good thing, and obtaineth favor from the Lord, so, or of the Lord. So men who actually got wives, women who are actually submissive, women who are actually obeying you, that's a, a good thing, and that's the Lord's favor. Just because mm -hmm. you got a woman who got a vagina, don't mean you got a wife. Mm -hmm. So one of uh, landing back on what the brothers were saying earlier, and going to a couple more scriptures, to prove more of what the Bible says on uh, if you know, to, you know, to let you know if you got you a good wife and let your sisters know if you fit for a king. Uh, let me get First Peter 3, 3 and 4, and then Sirach 36. Calling this the book of First Peter, chapter 3, verse 3. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold. Or putting on a apparel. Right, so Peter's saying the things that you adorn as a woman, the things that you are most concerned with as a woman, it shouldn't be your physical appearance. It shouldn't be how you, how you have braided. It shouldn't uh, be your jewelry or your makeup or your clothes. It should be your spirit, the man or the woman that's inside. Go ahead and keep reading that. But let it, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. Right, the hidden man of the heart is your spirit. Your spirit is your mind. You know what I'm saying? The things that you think. You know what I'm saying? That's where the spirit lies. Keep going. In that which is not corrupted. Right. And that's not corrupted by the world. That's not corrupted by the things or the suggestions that the world's throwing out there. Because you so firm on what God says. You uh -huh. see, God said it don't matter what nobody else. Even if it's your favorite celebrity or actor or none of that. It don't matter what they say and what they think. Because you know what God says and trust God. So uh, that which is not corruptible. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. What kind of spirit? Meek and quiet spirit. Meek and quiet spirit. A humble and quiet spirit. This is what wives have. They have a meek and quiet spirit. Especially when it comes to uh, not only just their husband but men in general. They understand that men are superior to them so they don't try to usurp authority over men. Especially their husbands. Uh, go ahead and finish that out though. Which is in the sight of God of great price. All right, so a woman with a meek and quiet spirit is a great price to the Lord. I mean, the Lord will pay, pay a pretty, pretty penny for you. He'll stick his neck out there for a woman who's silent and loving. And he's going to make sure a woman that's silent and loving is protected. That no evil comes to a woman like this. Because women like this are his daughters. The opposite. Or daughters of Satan. You know what I'm saying? But uh, real quick, we can get to Rock 36. So hold again, on, hold on, hold on. Read that. Finish that off, man. You get five and six. Okay, go ahead and get five and six. <laughs> go ahead and finish it out, Ken. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Right, so this is how the holy women who trusted in God, did. The holy women of old, they like to say it's a new time and a new age. All we got to do is bring our beauty and some vagina to the table. Mm. But the women of old brought more than just their beauty and more than just their vagina. Mm. 
big vicious innards that, <laughs> <laughs> that other men have been in. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. With, they, not only did they bring that, they brought a meek and quiet spirit to the table. They brought submission to the table. They brought complete obedience to the table. And with this, they were able to do great things with their husbands. But they did this because they trusted in God. So if you two sisters trust in God, you know what you would do? Be just like Sarah and other righteous women of the Bible. Have a meek and quiet spirit. God. And obey your husband in everything like God commands. Go ahead and keep reading. Verse 6. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. Calling him Lord. Sarah called Abraham what? Calling him Lord. Called him Lord. Master, sir. You be at work calling your boss. Yes, sir. No, sir. Why can't you answer your husband? Yes, my Lord. No, my Lord. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, my king. No, my king. This is what a holy woman would do. This is what women who trust God, this is what they do. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't trust God, you know what I'm saying? This not for you. You not fit for a king. <laughs> Uh, Sirach 36 one time. Let me finish that out. Whose daughters ye are. Oh, yeah, yeah, my bad. Go and finish that out. Yeah, go and finish that out. Whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Right, you can be a daughter of Sarah, a daughter of the Most High, if you do what God commands you to do, if you're willing to be obedient, be meek and quiet. Mm -hmm. you know, don't be afraid to do the things that God say. You should be more afraid to disobey God. God. You should be more afraid to be on the side of the world than on the side of God when he returns. Because Christ is coming back. You know what I'm saying? And you want to make sure you're not his enemy. The only way to not be his enemy is to adopt the spirit that the Bible says the one is supposed to have. God, what was the next one? Uh, Sirach 36 and uh, 22 through 22 and 23. This the book of Sirach, chapter 26. 36. 36, verse 22. Mm -hmm. It reads, The beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance. Right, so we're bringing the beauty to the table, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, we, we like a beautiful woman, of course. You know what I'm saying? But it's a little bit more than just beauty we're looking for. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of the sisters that's most beautiful today are the most corrupted, they're the most messed up. So truthfully, men with any type of wisdom and sense really are already trying to get away from y'all pretty men. Y'all really just pretty demons. Come. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all the ones who refuse to obey a man Come. because of y'all beauty. But go ahead and keep going. With all the choice in the world. Right. You know <laughs> and a man loveth nothing better. And a man loves nothing better than a beautiful woman. But what else does a man need? Keep going. If there be kindness. If there be what? Kindness. Uh -huh. Kindness. Meekness. Humility. And comfort in her tongue. And comfort in her tongue sounds like silent and loving. Sounds like uh, meek and quiet. That's the other one I want to subscribe to the city. But yeah. So, oh, go ahead. I got you. Is, yeah. But uh, <clears throat> go ahead and read that one more time. I can say if there be kindness. If there be kindness, meekness. And comfort in her tongue, then is not her husband like other men. Right. Her husband is more fortunate than other men. If his woman is at least kind, at least comforting in her tongue, right. you know what I'm saying? And in, and humble when she speaks to him. She's not talking crazy to him. She always mindful of how he feels, mm -hmm. what he may be going through, how she can help him with, you know what I'm saying, what he's going through today. These are the things that's on her mind all the time. A man who got a woman like this. Is more fortunate than any man in the world because most women talking crazy to their man, talking down on their man, don't want to do nothing to, for their man, don't want to help him no type of way. You know what I'm saying? It's just all about them, and uh -huh. that's it. Yeah. That's not a wife. That's not favor from the Lord, brothers. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. <clears throat> Get, uh, you got that? Which one you want? Sirach 26. 14. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 14. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Right, so you wondering if you got a wife, if she's silent and loving. If she's not speaking over you when you're trying to speak, she's being quiet and listening to understand what you're saying. If she's silent and loving and comforting you, especially when you're going through things, what is that, bro? 
a gift of the Lord. That's the gift from the Lord. That's the wife that if you find a woman like these that have these type of traits, that's the gift from the Lord. That's God. the wife from the Lord. If not, you just got a woman who giving you some pussy, bro. God. You know what I'm saying? Don't deceive yourself. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. And there is nothing so much worth as what? A mind well instructed. The Bible says there's nothing better than a woman whose mind is being instructed by her man. Well trained. Well trained. Mm. Got her in training. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, yeah, that's, so, that's really all I got out on that one. Kind, kind. Yeah. That's a... Uh, Reaction is number one. Righteous you know reaction. That's Righteous good. reaction. That's, exactly. That's dope. Come on, come So, like, I wanted to bring something out real quick. Come what you got? Um, I wanted to bring out uh, Proverbs chapter 6. I'm going to start at about 1 to start at verse 20 to uh, bring out a point. Proverbs 6 and 20? Yeah, bring out, yeah, I'm going to start at 20 and then after 20, jump around to uh, 24 and 25. Okay. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 20. My son, keep your father's commandments and forsake not the law of your mother. Now jump over and go to Proverbs 3.21. 3.21? Oh. Uh. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 21. It says, My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Right, so keep sound wisdom and discretion. Now let's go back over to uh, Proverbs 6 and start at 24. 23. It's the book of Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Good. Keep reading. To keep thee from the evil woman. To what? To keep thee from the evil woman. Go ahead. From the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Go ahead. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart. Mm -hmm. Neither let her take thee with thy, with her eyelids. Uh, That's what the brother did right there, man. Mm -hmm. He used sound wisdom and discretion. He seen the cap in her. Mm -hmm. Right. He says to keep thee from the evil woman. Mm -hmm. That's the right evil there. woman right there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He said, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't need it. I don't need your beauty, baby. Mm -hmm. I don't need that. It's not worth being yeah. destroyed for. Yeah, really. you know what I'm saying? A woman like her, man, a brother deals well with lions and a dragon. Straight up and down. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not about to deal with that, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not about to deal with a woman who always put the beauty of, of herself on a man for a man to accept her. Mm -hmm. That's not my problem that you have no self-esteem. Mm -hmm. That's all you got. Yeah, yeah, this is your average sister today. It's unfortunate, but it's your average sister because they tainted by social media. They got too many people in their inbox that's just going to tell them what they want to hear. So they believe that that's all they got to show up with is beauty mm -hmm. and box. They show up with beauty and box and they're good to go. But men that's actually have some sense about themselves and not just looking to smash, we actually can see past those 30 minutes of smashing to what the rest of the day have to offer and what else you're going to be going throughout the day, they actually going to question you and make sure you're serious about what you're talking about. They ain't going to let you just run all over their household, do whatever, while they just finance your whole life, finance your wickedness and everything you want to do with you and your friends, all that. They're not going to do that. Any man of substance that understands his worth is going to make sure you come into the table with submission. He's not going to work his whole life and build up everything he has only for you to come in and control everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, I want this couch over here. I want the candle bitch over there. I want to paint this room pink. I want to do it. No, sweetheart. You coming in here doing what you told or you're going to get the hell up out of here. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to happen. But, yeah, man, y'all had something else? Nah. Good yeah. to go? Yep. All right, man. We hope y'all was edified. Hopefully, uh, you know, y'all catch the next one. If y'all like the video, hit the like button. Hit that thumbs up. Come on, come on. And subscribe to the channel, yep. man. We'll catch y'all later. Yep. And, uh, yeah, hopefully y'all can be fit for a king. Come on. Yep. Exactly. Good at y'all later, man.